Okay, so whoever dies serving animal will also need to honor this Islam that belongs to the dominant owner. Okay, so this is the Islam. Now, the positive and negative Islam, basically positive Islam, the right of way is a kind of positive system. Basically, positive Islam just means what? You can only use somebody else's property in a very definite way. In this case, right away means that you can only walk to and fro from there to access the public road and the public road to go to your house. That's all. You cannot do anything else. All right. You can only just walk across to and fro. That's all. Right. This is a kind of positive argument. I say positive reason. Right. Positive reason. Right. Now, negative reason on the other hand imposes a restriction on the use of the land by the Soviet owner. All right. So imagine you're the owner of a land. You are supposed to be able to use your land for whatever purposes, correct? But because it's a servant tenement, you as a servant owner, you cannot do something on your land, all right? If there's a easement, all right? So this kind of easement is called a negative easement. It imposes on a servant owner, all right? It restricts the servant owner, all right, from doing something. For example, they cannot disrupt the supply of electricity, the supply of water, all right, to the dominant tenement, all right? A right of light is a kind of easement that is a negative easement, right? Because you cannot build your your property to block the sunlight reaching your neighbor's land. Okay? For example, negative easement, right of light or right to light. You have these two tenements here, all right? And the sun here, the light, right, strikes and illuminates the house here on the dominant tenement, right? At this particular angle, all right? Now, the the servant owner here, he cannot use his house higher than a certain story, his wall higher than a certain higher than a certain story, alright, such as to block the light from this angle, alright, keeping the aperture, the opening of the window, illuminating the house. Because this property here, the dominant owner here, has a right to light. Okay, it's a right to sufficient light. Okay, so here he cannot build. So it's like a restriction on this land. The owner here cannot build higher than a certain height. Right, you cannot build this wall higher than you know uh, five feet or ten feet, for example. Right, so it's a negative easement. Okay, it's a negative easement. Right, here another one. Uh, you can imagine this is here. The example is the sewage. All right, but you can imagine it's a water supply or you know a generator, a okay? public generator. Okay, uh, public grid for the uh, supply of utilities. Right, uh, electricity. Okay, so here for example the sewage here. You see this is a dominant. Property B is a dominant owner, property A is a servant, right? Because why? The sewage pipe or the water pipe or the uh, or the gas pipe or the uh, electricity cables, right, runs from the outside the public supply here, right? Uh, underneath property A, the servant owner, servant tenement, right, to the dominant tenement, correct? Now on the servant tenement, right, this kind of easement is a negative easement, right? Because on the servant tenement, the owner of property A, the survey owner, cannot go and build on top of this land here, such as you know, you damage the pipes or the cables. It will disrupt right, or interfere with the supply of water, utilities, you know, uh, to uh, the dominant element. Right? So here, this kind of uh, easement is called a negative easement. Alright? So the example here is a sewage, it could be a water pipe, it could be a electricity cable. Right, or gas pipes. Okay. Now there are easements here that's recognized by law. Right. So these are the easements that is very established in the right of way. Okay. We already touched on this with just now. The right of storage, parking, drainage, support, and light. Now in Singapore, very common right of way. Storage not as common. Parking not as common. But you also have parking in Singapore. Drainage very common in Singapore. Support very common. The right of light is quite rare because Singapore is an urban city, right? Usually the right of light is recognized in the countryside, in the country, you know, uh, if you're like, uh, like uh, England, right? Very big in the countryside, okay? Where there's, you know, the farms and all that. So there, the right of light, the right to light is important, right? But in Singapore, in the urban kind of landscape, right, in the city, uh, it's not recognized. So you cannot, very hard for you to claim, right? Because the neighbor is building how high and that, you're very dark, it's very hard, right? The law, the courts will not agree with it. But the right of way is very common in Singapore. Okay, very common. Uh, right of way, right of drainage, uh, right of support, very common. Okay? So these are the few uh, uh, instances established in law. Now, there are four conditions. Uh, it must be in existence, all right? These four conditions before the right can be recognized as a easement. So we are talking about a third party rights in somebody else's property, land. 
Okay, so sometimes in the real world, people will try to claim rights in your land or in you know, somebody else's land. Okay? So sometimes they will claim that, oh, I have a right. I have the right to use your land to do this, I have the right to use your land to do that, blah, blah, blah. Right? But before the courts have recognized the right as a business, they must find that these four things exist. If one of them is defective or is not existent, then the courts, will, the law will not say, or the courts will not say that it is a business. It could be some other rights, right? Or the court will just totally say that no, you have no right on that. Okay? But here, these are the four basic conditions in order for an easement to exist, right? Again, if one of them is defective or not existent, then there is no easement. There is not a easement. Okay? Now, Number one, there must be a dominant and a servant gentleman. This is very, very, you know, very logical, right? So there must be two houses of land, one the dominant, the other one the servant gentleman. Okay? Now, generally speaking, if you have one parcel of land, the ownership is the same, right? And the easement is defined as what? A right to use somebody else's property. Right? So logically, there must be two tenements, right? Belonging to two different people. Understand? Okay? Right? So the first one is very basic, very easy, yeah? Two tenements, two parcels of land. One dominant, dominant, the other servant. Number two, easement must improve the enjoyment of the land of the dominant tenement. All right? And not merely for the convenience of the dominant tenement owner. Huh? I will say owner here. Now, sometimes number two is expressed as this. Right? The easement must accommodate the dominant tenement. Sometimes it's expressed in this way. By that, they mean that easement must improve the enjoyment of the dominant tenement. And not for just for the convenience and comfort of the dominant tenement owner. Okay? Now, what do they mean? Let's say, for example, you have this, just for the right of way. Okay? The right of way. And let's say, alright, this is a shortcut only. But actually, dominant owner here, he has another way to access the public, but in order to access the public, this other way is very whiny. You must walk a very long distance in order to reach. Okay? There's any, there's a, a way only, right? Okay? Or there's another road here. But in order for him to access this road, right, he must climb a lot of stairs. Very discomfort. But here is flat land. This one is flat land. Okay? Now, if let's say he has another access to a public road or public street, alright? He cannot just anyhow claim that, that he has a right of way, you know, via the neighbor's property, the same and uh, this asset be to access the road. Because the law says no. It must be so bad that means you have no other way, and this is the only way out of necessity, the only way for you to access. If you have another way, for example, is you know, is uh, very tedious, all right, very uh, you will climb a lot of stairs, or is a very long way for you to go to access the power road, then you cannot have an easement, all right, you cannot have it, right? You must improve the land, that means without this, without allowing you to walk across your neighbor's land, without giving you this easement. Your property is useless. Alright? It's useless. So, out of necessity, alright? You must have this. If you don't have it's like your land is worthless. Okay? Now, if this is like a shortcut or this is more comfortable to use, alright? Then the law says that they will not grant you an easement because you have another way to access the public road or street. Right? Just because it's not comfortable for you or just because it's not convenient for you. Right means you know uh, you, you, your right is an easement. No way. Okay, so it's like you really have no choice. All right, out of necessity you must assess. Not your 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 your, your enjoyment of this dominant tenant is totally non-existent or worthless. Okay, so that is what that is what the second uh, criteria there, right? The condition there is trying to say. It must. It's not just for the convenience of the owner or the comfort of the owner. It must be really right to improve the land. Right, without which your land is worthless or you cannot enjoy your land. Alright? And this is the piece of application here. Okay. Here's number two. Number three. The two tenements must be of different persons. In other words, the two tenements must belong to different people. Now, if the two parcels of land belong to the same owner, then you don't need this man. Right? You can walk over your own land. Right? If parcel A and parcel B belong to the same person, then his own property, why does he need an easement? He can walk over his own property. Because by definition, easement is what? A right to use somebody else's property. It's not a right to use your own property. You're the owner. You, of course, you have the right to use your own property. But easement is what? It's a right to use a property belonging to somebody else, not yours. 
Okay, so number three is very logical. All right, it passes the number one. The two phenomena must belong to two different people. Number four is the hardest. Number four is this. So this one must be capable of being subject matter, the subject matter of a grant. This one must be capable of being subject matter of a grant. Okay, now here, number four has different layers, different levels. Right? Now on the surface, Right, the, the most basic level is the easement must be capable of being subject matter of grant is that when the parties create an easement, let's say for example these two these two guys right, the neighbors right, create this easement, right, okay, allow this owner here to cross over this parcel of land, right? The the owners, the two owners here, the survey and the owner, owner, right, must be of age, right? 21 years old and adult, cannot be under age when they create this easement. That's number one. Number two, they must not be suffering from any mental disability. Also, legally speaking, when you know we, we say that they must have legal capacity, twenty one years old and above, and cannot be suffering from any mental disability when they create these rights here. Understand? Right. So that's the superficial level. That's the you know the the, the you know the, the most basic level. All right. Now. Here, you look at what kind of words are the parentheses. Uh, you can copy this down or you can take a picture there right, because, uh, uh, so, because I take a lot of time to explain this number four, right? so I decided to write it down here. Right? Now, generally speaking, right, number four means that it is a right that is capable of being granted under the deed. Now, granted under the deed here, I'll explain it later, right? but we look at number two here, clearly defined and granted by a person capable of granting. Now, granted by a person capable of granting means that one is another and not suffering from mental disability. Okay, so that's this part here. Alright? Now, being grant, capable of being granted under deed clearly defined means what? It must be something. The right must be something. The instant must be something that you can describe in precise English language. And it must be something that's measurable. Okay, example. If you want to claim a right to use your neighbor's land, you must you are trying to claim a right of way, right? To access the property. You cannot say, oh, I'm free or I have a right to walk all over this land. No. To extend, for example, the dimension of the strip of land that you can exercise your right over must be measurable, right? The area, how long, how wide. Okay? It must be that. You cannot say, oh, I can just walk any old house, anywhere I wish. No. This one must be measurable. Another example. That's why we talk about the right of life, isn't it? The right, okay. the right of life. You cannot say, ah, let's say you're a countryside, right? You have these two houses, your neighbor your house. You cannot say, oh, my neighbor feels so high, yeah, you know, got the light, yeah, now my house don't do. You cannot just anyhow claim like that, right? Now, the anger by which the light, the sunlight travels from the sun and hitting your opening here, the anger must be measurable, right? The intensity of the light hitting that opening, for example, the, the how wide is the opening, the breadth and the length, if it's a circular in nature, the radius, the circumference, alright, the diameter must be measurable. Alright? The angle of the light traveling into this hole here, aperture opening here, measurable, everything is measurable, and then intensity. If you if you have a lower diameter or your angle changes, what is the intensity? All these must be measurable. So it must be very, very precise, precisely described, right? Measurable, ascertainable, and described in the English language, right? Before the courts have grant you the right. Now another, what is clearly, what what is the this word here? Right, quickly, yeah. Clearly defined, right? That's the, just what I said, alright. And capable of granted in another deed also means that it must be one of those easements that's already established or recognized in law. So what are the few that's already established in law? This few. Right, you cannot come up with some new right, new right, right, to do something, right? Cannot. Very difficult. Right? So if you fall within this field, the very established, you know, uh, Eastern that's recognized by law, then yes, then you fall under number four as well, right? Is something that's capable of being granted under the deed, clearly defined and granted by a person to do a fighting for that. Alright? This is the the four that the, the field that is recognized established under law is this part. Must be uh, Recognizable is not. Understand? Okay? Must be, not something new, something novel. Right? Now, the last one is also very important. The right that the dominant owner is trying to claim must not be so wide, alright, so expensive as to deprive the survey owner possession and enjoyment of his own, own land. Alright? 
So if you try to paint a rat that you can walk all over his land, you're actually depriving him of the use of his own land. Understand? You cannot. You cannot paint this rat. The, the law, the judges, the courts will not recognize it. Alright? So you must, your rights as the dominant is trying to claim cannot be so wide as so as to deprive him, the owner here, of possession and enjoyment of his own land. Alright? So there were other there were some cases in law where you know people try to claim an uh, easement of parking. Alright? So one of one of those questions is that whether you know the, the claim of an easement, right, would deprive the owner right, to use the parking lot, right, his own land, to park his own car or you know uh, to, to do his own things, right? So 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 there were some you know a lot of cases really depends on the facts of the case, right? There are some cases where you know the parking lot only uh, occupy maybe three quarters. The owner there is still you know free to go and do something on the side, right? Another case where you know there were a few parking lots, right? They were talking about whether the claim to the easement of parking, all right, uh, substantially deprived the owner of the use of land. The owner there he wants to say you know he wants to be able to use the land, uh, you know to to redevelop, right? So he wants to uh, get rid of these <sighs> car park, car park lots, and then he said, oh, I want to redevelop the land, right? But the key, the question came up in the court is that whether you know he can he can do that because if he can say that if he can say that you know the the people who has the easement right or the parking lot uh, uh, who can park their cars there that one is not an easement right then it's okay right then he can just take that his land and leave it alone right but the people who can park their car there is trying to claim that you no know, my right to park our cars there we have an easement and if there's an easement then you know the the oh, the, the certain animal owner cannot take the land and it, right. So in that case, it's very interesting, right? So the parking lot almost, you know, um, um, occupied, right? Uh, every single inch of the of the land, right? But in that case, because it's a developer, the owner is the developer. He wants to take back the land to be developed, right? And the court found that this is the English court in England. They found that you know there was no uh, or the claim by the, the people who can park the cars there, right? It's not so extensive. Why? Because the the court said that look. You know, he doesn't deprive him of the, the owner of the possession, the certain owner of the possession, and this and that, because he can build, you know, he can build uh, something in the in the airspace, right? He can build something underground, right? So, but the mere fact that you know these people, you know, parking on top here does not mean that you know the, the owner, the certain owner, is deprived of the use or occupation of his land. Okay, so it's very very good uh, in the case, right? Uh, but because maybe. The special fact is that because the owner there, the survey owner there is a developer, and he's trying to get the land right, to redevelop and to deprive the people from having their car. Okay? But the court say that you know, that, that is an easement, alright? Uh, the, the survey owner cannot you know, claim that it's not an easement. Therefore, because of that, it's an easement, he is not allowed to take the top out lots that can stay there to redevelop. Okay? Uh, quite interesting. Now, Inevitably, when you come across, when you study Eastman, you come across this case uh, called the Big Honorable Park. And it's a very famous case. Now, don't worry too much about this case. Yeah? Don't really worry too much about this case. Basically, this case here, alright, first of all, this case set up these four conditions. Right? The judges in that case, alright, establish these four basic conditions before the rights can be recognized as a Eastman. Right? So, that's the most important thing you need to know. Alright? Now, the second thing the, this case established is that there's no requirement for all uh, the house goods. Basically, the red color underline, eh, the case just means this. There's no need for you to, to, to say that maybe this two dominant and the certain dominant must mix in each other. They could be far apart. Right? Now, just very quickly, just to let you know, right? Here, in the right of way, the dominant, the two dominant, uh, the, the dominant and certain dominant must mix in each other. Just to think, a lot of way, you can Right, but for the other kind of easement, for example, all these other kinds, cash storage, parking, drainage, support, and light, need not be mixed with each other. Right, the the tenants need not be directly mixed with each other, adjacent or joining each other. Okay, so we have Edinburgh uh, case just established that. Now in this case, it's very interesting because the easement they are trying to claim is that easement a right to use a common garden, communal garden. Right, right. So what happened was that the owner the land is actually owned by one person initially. Then later on, it was subdivided into smaller pieces. Okay, but in the center of it all is this communal garden set. Right? This field here, this plain ground set, the communal garden. Right? So initially, at first, it was two tenements only, this garden and the other tenement here. Right? 
But later on, it will start divided into all these smaller pieces, all these houses. Each house sits on a plot of land. All right? So the question then arises where, where, where is that, no, whether the, for example, the green house or the yellow house, okay, their land there is not directly adjacent, all right, adjoining the communal gardens. Right? Whether they have a right to use the garden, right? and the right to use the garden, whether it's considered an easement. Right? So to, again, it's not for lawyers, right? not for you, right? but just to cut the long story short, right? and to just to keep tell you the, the court conclusion is that there's such a thing as a right to use communal garden. Right? So there's a, a in three Emperor case they recognize this kind, this very uh, this kind of easement. An easement, a right to use a communal garden. Okay? That's number one. Now, having established that, then the court you know, have this problem, right? All the easement up to that date is that most of that is the, the tenements are next to each other. Right? If, if they recognize this easement, then they have to argue whether you know the tenement needs to be needs to be next to each other. And the court concluded that, you know, uh, the tenements, right, the two tenements does not need to adjoin each other. It is it will not be immediately next to each other in order for uh, for the yellow house here or the blue houses here at the back, right? To be able to enjoy the garden, okay, uh, for the issue of okay. So this case just established that, but more importantly, is the four conditions, right? And then this part here, that the two tenements needs does not need to be immediately adjoining or next to each other, okay? So that's all you need to remember. Now, from use of easement, non-physical, because we're not talking about the land itself, right? If you go back very quickly, yeah? we're not talking about this strip of land here, the highlighted one, right? Right of way, easement is a right to use somebody else's property. Invisible, incorporeal, highly determined. Alright, so we are not talking about this land per se. This land belongs to the servant. No, it's part of the servant element. It's part of social D. Alright, so we are not talking about the physical land. Alright, so it's non-physical. Alright, we are talking about something that's invisible. We have right, to use somebody else's land. Okay, so it's non-physical. Enjoyment but not possession of land. So it's non-possessory. For example, the right away, the dominant owner can walk through and throw. That's all. He cannot go to the strip of land which belongs to the servant. Okay, we already established that. He cannot go to the street of land and go and build something there. He cannot go and occupy there. He cannot go and possess the land there. Right? It's just for him to use to access the public road and for the public road, right, to access his own house. Right? That's all. Okay? Now, encumbrance, we talked about it already just now, right? Because it's a certain tenement, it's kind of encumbrance of land, it's kind of burden, it's kind of liability on the Serbian tenement. Okay? Now, the last part here, easement runs the land, does not run the person. Runs the land, does not run the person is actually a legal phrase. Alright, it's a legal phrase. What does it mean? It means that the rights itself, the easement, the rights itself is attached to the dominant tenement. Whoever is the owner of the dominant tenement will have the easements, will have the right to use his neighbor's land. In the right of way, just now, the right of access way, he will have the right to cross over his neighbor's land to reach the public road. Okay? Now, if he sells the dominant tenement to another person, then this easement does not follow him. It's attached to the land. Whoever becomes the owner of the dominant tenement will have the rights to use the tenement's land to reach the public road. Okay? So, it runs with the land, it's attached to the dominant tenement, it does not attach to the person. Okay? So, this is what the red colors uh, make sure it's not the same. Now, how is the easement created? Number one, Act of Parliament. Huh? Very simple, Act of Parliament, there was two acts in Singapore, the Land Titles Act and the Land Titles Strata. In each of these acts, there are certain easement that's implied by law. That means it's created by law. So that the owners, or the owners of the divide property, you do not have to you know, go and create all the easement in the numbers. Right? Because when you buy a property, the easements are already there. Right? It's already recognized by law, it's already implied by law. Right? Because this kind of easement is created under the Act of Parliament. Right? Now, examples of uh, easement right here Land Titles Act, Land Titles yes. Charter Act, right? Land Titles uh, uh, Act also. Okay? So basically, here you go, go back and read, uh, basically things like right support, shelter, passage of water, gas, la, you know, sewage, la, electricity, cable. Right? So you move into your apartment, you do have to negotiate your access to your downstairs area. Hey, you know, uh, my water pipe, uh, you know. Uh, we go through your premises. You don't need to the HDB, for example, right? You look at your sewage pipe in your toilet, right? The sewage pipe is located in your unit. But upstairs, when you do your business, right, you flush the toilet, right? 
the silvers will pass through your unit door. Similarly, water pipe, alright, uh, this could be even for flooded condominiums, flooded, you know, uh, certain you know, usually our water tank is upstairs, right, in the, in the ceiling, right? So, uh, when you downstairs, when you, uh, uh, let's say you're on the fifth floor, right, you open your tap, you go and shower, right, the water, when they pass through the water tank, right, from the water tank, pass through your upstairs neighbors, all the way, all the different neighbors upstairs, all the way to your unit, okay? So, all these like, passage of water, passage of you know, uh, sewage, like, electricity cables, all these are modern day systems that's created by the government. Right? Uh, land titles set, uh, land titles set up. Right? I already showed you Masam Sun, the sewage. Okay? Uh, this is another one, party wall. Party wall is one wall between two units. It could be a uh, shorter unit, it could be, for example, a uh, uh, semi detached house. Right? In this case, semi detached house. Right? Where there's a wall here, and both of them will have a right of support of each other. The basement of support. Okay, a right of support of each other. So in a way, we cannot, cannot go and damage the wall such that you know, the whole thing collapse on the neighbor. The neighbor will not have a support. Okay? Or we cannot go and damage the wall such as collapse. Similarly with boundary walls, boundary walls, boundary walls are there are two walls. Okay, party wall only one wall. Alright, they share the two sides. Alright? But boundary wall the three two walls. One wall belonging to your neighbor, the other wall belongs to you. Right? Similarly, there's a right of support for the two walls. Okay, you cannot, you must maintain and you know, do yourself the wall such that you know, the whole thing will not collapse right? on your neighbor or yourself. Okay, so these are all modern day right of support. Okay, others are, for example, integrated development in Singapore, very common. Integrated development, for example, let's say you have a, you see, you have a, a bus interchange downstairs. Okay, bus interchange, right? So it's under LTA land. Right? Bus interchange, right? But on top, then here you got like let's say you have a shopping shopping centre, okay, a shopping 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 mall, right? But upstairs is your condominium. Okay? So all these are integrated kind of a development of the Singapore, right? So here are all private property, right? Private property. Right? So the right support for example would be your column, right? Your wall and the column, the supporting column. Right? If you do not have this column, this thing will collapse downstairs, right? Collect down to the bus station or collect collapse down to your shopping mall, right? So you have all these supporting columns, right? Supporting columns, right? All these are support, a right of support. Right? A right of support. Okay, so all these are all in flight measure of the column. You do not have to, you know, go and actively, for example, go and do it. Okay? Although a lot of times in the documents, uh, you also they also have to express how things condition, talking about all these systems. Okay? So the modern day uh, especially for electricity cables, la, water supply, la, you know, sewage pipe, all these modern day systems. There's data parallelization. So, yes, that's when you get rid of this application. Alright, express in flight reservation slash rent. Uh, this one a little bit more tedious, right? I'm going to explain to you what is the express reservation, express grant. And then there's also the implied reservation, implied grant. So there are four things here. Express reservation, express grant. Implied reservation, implied grant. Understand? Okay? Now, part of this is also overlap with Act of Parliament. Because Act of Parliament implies the easement. So you can say that it is a implied reservation, right? Or implied right. Okay? But more applicable when it's between members. Okay? So let me just illustrate what is implied reservation, implied grant, and express reservation, express grant. Let's look at the express reservation first. Okay? So now I'm going to explain express reservation. Now let's say at the very beginning, right, these two properties, green and red property, belong to Jen. Jen, only one owner. Okay, Jen owns these two plots of land. Jen later decided to divide it into two plots, the green and the red plot. And Jen decided that she wants to sell away the green plot of land. Okay, so Joel comes along, Joel wants to buy the green plot of land. But Jen realized that, hey, if I sell this green plot of land, alright, then I will not have access to the public road here. Right, she'll be landlocked, she'll be stuck. Right? So what does she do? When she sells the green pot to Joel in the documents, in the same purchase documents, in the instruments of conveyance, right? She expressly written, expressly right, in fact, right, 
expressly reserve a right to use Joel's property later on after he fought over the green block. She reserve a right to use his property, this street of land here, to access the public good. Understand? She's reserving to herself a right to use Joel's property. Okay? So this is part of the terms of the sale. Right? When she sells to Joel, we say, look, alright, you, you have to give me the right. I'm reserving the right to use the property to access the public good. Right? Otherwise, I do not have access. Okay? So that's called express reservation. Now, what is an express right? Now, express right is the other way around. Okay, okay, I'd rather maybe let me explain. Uh, since I ex okay, I think it's easier for you right, guys if I explain. Since I explain express reservation, let me ex uh, let me explain implied reservation. Okay, implied reservation first. I think it's easier for you. Okay? Now, same scenario, Jen owns two plots of land. She decided to sell the green plot to Joel. Alright? But same thing, she realized that if she sells the green plot to Joel, she will not have access to the public road. Alright? But this time when she sells the land, she did not expressly put into the contract or the instrument of conveyance that she wants to reserve a right to use Joel's land to access the public road. Alright? She just by a verbal kind of arrangement, verbal agreement, nothing like that. Alright? And to her conduct and actions between the parties, right? for example, she asked Joel to do the, the war here and he allowed her to press his land. And Joel said, Yes, okay, after I buy over, I will just do a war here and he go and do it. Alright? So then, nothing writing, alright? The property was sold to Joel. Joel allowed Jen to reserve a right to walk over his property to assess our work. But nothing is that right. It's just a verbal understanding, verbal arrangement. And the conduct of the parties. Okay? So jo Joel didn't, you know, for example, didn't hype up, didn't do a war all of stuff, right? He just did his war here, right? To hype up and allow Jen to do So that's called implied reservation. Okay? Now, what is express grant? Express grant. Express grant is the other way around, right? Here, Joel owns two plots of land. The red color and the green color plot. He decided to sell the red color plot. Okay? Now, but he realized that if he sells the red color plot, whoever is the buyer will not have access to the public road and no one will want to buy the property because it's worthless. Alright? It's of no commercial value. You cannot have access to the public road. So, in the conveyance, alright, in the, in the sale con uh, instrument of conveyance, in the sale purchase contract and all that, Joel expressly grants a right to the buyer, in this case, Jen. Jen comes from Paul. Okay? He grants a right to Jen, the buyer, to access the public road right, by this street of land, through this street of land. So he grants Jen a right to use his property to access the public road. Okay? So he put it in writing in the documents, therefore, it's called an express grant. In this case, Joel is the person who grants the right to the Buyer to Jen. Okay? So this is express grant, it's written in black and white. What is implied grant? Implied grant seems in a way to not own two pieces of land, two pieces of land. He decided to sell the red color plot to Jen. But realizes that if he sells to Jen, Jen has no access to the public good. Okay? So what does, does he do? He verbally agreed or through his conduct agreed to allow yeah, Jen to use his yeah, yeah, to access the public but nothing in writing. Yeah. Nothing in writing. Okay? So what he do through his conduct, right? It could be verbal or through his conduct. What he do? Of course he did his war here, right? He did the war here, right? To 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 partition the two different properties, right? So he did his war here, you see his war here, he did his war here. Then, without, nothing in writing, but through their behavior, they conduct. He allows Jen to use his, his land here, or not his land, his land, eh, to access the public road. Right? So, nothing in black. So, this is called implied grant. Implied grant. Okay? Nothing in writing, nothing expressed. Implied grant. Right? To the verbal arrangement or the conduct of the parties. Okay? And, yeah? right. Any question? Any question? Uh, just now we said implied grant. Why not in the 
in the what? In the express ground uh, instead of you can do express ground. So you can from in Singapore, generally speaking, right, you should put it in that thing, right? So to create mm. the SSE, right? Then you become a legal interest, right? But yeah. sometimes in real life, right, in, in law, there are people who create all this without putting it in that thing. Right? So maybe to the behavior, right? To the conduct of the parties to behavior. Right? So but in this case then it's an implied run. It's an implied run. Okay? Right? Okay. What is by necessity? No pain. No choice. If you if the law does not, if the courts, the judges do not recognize my right here, you know, and this is an easement to cross over my neighbor's head, I, the, the property is useless, it's worthless, they don't accept the power road, right? So it's like, no choice, necessity, it's necessary, or else the uh, the land is useless, okay? So that's by necessity. In fact, this is the most common one, right, that is being created, right, necessity, right, in the, uh, in all the last, all the old cases in English law. Right? Necessity. Now, prescription, there's overlap here. Basically, prescription just means long continuous usage. Long and continuous usage. So, for example, let's say the right of way, okay? Somebody has been using the, uh, the neighbor's land to cross over the neighbor's land for many, 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 many years, all right? And it's continuous, all right? Now, then they can go to court and argue that this is an easement because you know, I've been using this way all along, very for longest time, and then you know it's continuous and it's never stopped. Right? So in the past, in England, for example, right, somebody in the Queen court they say, look, you know, uh, since the reign of King Richard the First, King Richard the First was like you know five hundred years ago, right? Since the reign of King Richard the First, my ancestors, my family has been using this pathway or this way to bring my sheep and my cattle and my cow to go to the other part of land to graze. Right, so they cross over the neighbor's land to you know to the other part to, to you know to graze their the cattle and sheep, right? And they are trying to tell the court and prove that look, long usage for many hundreds of years will be doing that, right? And continuously will never stop. Okay, so if they are successful, then the court say, okay, I recognize your right as a, you have an easement. Okay, so this is by way of prescription, right? It's quoted by way of prescription. Now in Singapore today, if you can prove to the court or right, under the land title set. Uh, this one is also part of the huh? Under land title set, if you can prove continuous usage and long usage of 20 years or more, okay, at least 20 years, then, alright, in the country, generally speaking, right, you'll be recognized as a Christian. If you can prove that you've been you know, doing this for, for 20 years or more and continuous, nobody's got you. Okay? Then, yes, in this case, is by prescription. Terminated again by statute, the statute that means like by Act of Parliament, right? So in Singapore, again, the Act says that look, if you have a, uh, a, a, a right of way, for example, and you never use it for 12 years or more, then the certain owner can go to court and argue that you know the business is terminated as soon as because you have abandoned it, right? It's not used for 12 years or more, okay? So in Singapore, by statute, it says 12 years or more. And if the seven animal owner from Queens is the same abundant, then it will be terminated. Right? Now, express release very simple. The neighbor sign a document, right? To say that, oh, seven owner, no need to bear the burden already. Okay? You are released from the, you know, from the burden, right? From the easement. Okay? So then, that's called express release where the parties enter into a, something in writing. Okay? Something in writing. Right? To terminate the easement. The implied release is a case where there's no return agreement. Alright? Let's say, let, let's, let's take a look at the very quick one. Okay. Uh, let's, for example, right, this uh, right of way, I think it's the easiest to answer. Okay, right of way, this is right? Let's say, for example, right, the, the LTK built a road here, built a road here. Okay, another road here. And then now this guy can access to his yard, right, or uh, the side of his property, alright? To reach the road here, uh, the new road here. Then this one, he, he abandoned it, right? He no longer use it anymore, all right? Then what happened? The civil owner, okay, of course they can sign a document, right? To release, all right? Returning the easement, correct? Right? So that's called express release. But let's say they never sign anything, right? 
But let's say he has been using it to access power, and then this one saw it, and then he what? He go and build his wall. His wall is right here, right? His fence or his wall is here, right? At first it's here, right? He, this guy can go through, right? But now he go, okay, since he never used, I build like that. Go build and cover up. And this guy never protests, alright? So he has allowed him to build a cross in order to protest. Huh? Why? Because he can use this part already, right? So that's called implied release. To the conducts of the party, right? To also a verbal arrangement, the conduct parties, alright? They have you know that the uh, easement is being terminated. Okay? So that is in part. I just get your piece of this. Oh dear. I keep using the annotation here. Okay. Alright, so it says implied release. Now the last one, unification of ownership. Unification of ownership is where the two tenements now become one owner. Now if you own both plots of land, then you are the owner, you can use your own land. Right? You do not need if you don't need an easement anymore. Because easement by definition is the right to use somebody else's land, not your land. Alright? So if you buy two plots of land, you buy the next, whether you are a servant, you buy over the government, or you are a dominant, you buy over the servant, then the two plots belongs to you, you do not need the easement. Now, in this kind of cases, when the two plots of land becomes under one ownership, the easement actually ceases, it stops. No more easement already. Okay? But interestingly, the law says that, look, once it's under one ownership, the easement is, has ceased, no more easement. Right? But the easement that is Sees or becomes quiet is actually called a quasi easement because if one of the ports belong or is sold or being rented out right to add to the to a tenant or is being sold to a new owner, then the easement that sees and you order when there's a unification of ownership, the easement will become alive again. So it's like a volcano, right? So at first there's an easement, right? But both the ports then come under one person, one ownership. The easement actually sees the volcano. It becomes dormant, quiet, right? Now it is called a quasi easement, right? The name they, they label it as a quasi easement. Although it's dead, it's no longer an easement, right? Now, but once one of the port, one of the tenements is being sold to another person or is rented out to a tenant, that Eastman that was seized earlier on will now become active again. Alright? This kind of Eastman is called a quasi Eastman. Right? A quasi Eastman. Okay, when it's dormant, it's called a quasi Eastman. Because active again, then it becomes a Eastman again. Right? But when it's dormant, it is called a quasi Eastman. Okay, okay? Okay, so this is what I've gone through already. Okay, this part. This slide here, don't worry, I explained all this already. Black ground, you know, unification of ownership, right? Now, it's all in the legal mumbo jumbo. Again, let me just stress this, right? Uh, you need to read this and try to understand. I already explained just now all these things, right? Black ground, black whatever, uh, express ground, express reservation, and the four side is there, right? It's just that this one is crouched in the kind of legal mumbo jumbo, the English language, right? You must try to read and condition your, you know, get used to it, get used to this kind of language. Right, but the meaning and all that I will explain this time as I went through this. Okay. Okay, my map again. Alright, to help you revise. Alright. Now, before I end this month, wow, so much time as well. Right. Before I end this month, two case study. The first case study is a uh, Wee Hong Long case. Now, Wee Hong Long is a video next speaker. Right? Always in the news when I read. He either sue people or cannot sue. Right. The recent case is involving the Western Education Group. Alright. So anyway, we all young owns property, the second element, alright, is by Golo, alright. Now, Teresa Cheng Wong Meiling is actually a famous gynecologist in Singapore, right, a doctor, a gynecologist, okay. Her bungalow is plot A. Now, her, the dominant element, plot A, is landlord, because plot B, D, C, beside her, are all other owners, other private owners. So, her land is blocked by all these B, C, D, E plots. Okay? Now, when this case, when, uh, in, during the time of this case, right, she actually has an easement to cross over plot B, the certain animal, to access the motor, motor road, right? The road here. Okay? The easement is already there. 
But why she said Li Hong Leong was because Li Hong Leong I want to go and build a guard house here. He built a guard house at this entrance here. His house now, right, his land, like, survey owner, right? His whole land, this is all his land. So what he did was that he built a guard house here, and then there's a gantry. So whenever, uh, uh, you know, the doctor, the right, producer, she wants to drive a car, to reach a family road, she wants to wait for the guard, all right? Whenever she comes home from her, you know, from her work, she wants to drive into her, her home property, she got to wait for the guard to open the gantry, the gate. Sometimes the guy is in the toilet, she could be in a car wait, you know, or you know, for the guy to come, right? Sometimes the guy is there but take his own sweet time. So she wasn't happy, she stood in her wall, right? Now she has an easement of right of way, right? Her contention is that look, you know, I have a right of way over your land, I'm the dominant owner. You cannot impede my free movement, the free exercise of my right. By putting a guard house there at gantry, and then you're obstructing my way, you are you know causing me uh, difficulties, you're putting obstacles for me. I, I know my access cannot be impeded, alright? Because I have the right way. My right cannot be interfered with, alright? But Sri Leong argument is that, look, this is a servant tenement. It's my property. I can do whatever I want. I can build on it as I wish, okay? Who won the case? Who did the court agree with? Hmm? <coughs> Dominant, we are talking about rights. When you have a right, your right should not be interfered with. Whether you're the owner, alright, or in this case, your you have an easement, right? Your right of pay, in this case, an easement over somebody else's land. Alright? So here the dominant owner wall, the doctor wall. Because the court said, look, a right of way. Alright, she has free, she must have free access, you cannot impede, obstruct, put obstacles along the way. Alright, so in this case, Li Hong Leong lost the case and the doctor won the case. The next one is this one. I just want to show a picture, right, because I want you to see, let you see physically how does it look. Now, where is the survey dynamic, this one? The survey dynamic is like that. Over here. Over here. And then where's the road here? The road is here. Right, the road is here. Is here, okay? Eh? Now this is the dominant. This is the dominant. Alright, so here, this one. You see, that's why you see the is the value is uh you know is affected, right? Because you see, even though this is this is a man, I call a survey man, uh, this word here, alright, but you see the owner he has to build this word here for privacy. Okay? So anyway, this is a survey dominant, the survey dominant. He owns all the way here, here, all the way here, all the way here, okay? Here, here, right? So what do you do? He built these two things. He built this one and he built this one. Half constructed. Okay? He built these two. But the dominant, what does he do? He, he drives his car, he you know to access that, right? So right away, right? It's not right. So when the servant built these two things, he goes out, not happy. Right? He sued the servant dominant. When they go to court, the court says, oh yeah, you know, uh, educated people, rich people. I never say that. I say because say, hey, good neighbors lah. Can you resolve all these things yourself, right? Privately between the lawyers, okay? Don't try and disturb the court because court got more things to do. You know, more important things. Ah, be good neighbors lah. Resolve it between yourself lah, okay? So the they adjourn and they try to resolve. But after a few months, they couldn't resolve it. They went back to the high court. All right, all right. But by then, by the time they went back to the high court, second time the court was not very happy. The court scolded them. Right? They said, hey, you all do know what good people are wasting the court's time, wasting money, right? You know this, right? You have got more things, more better things to do, okay? More important things to do, okay? But the court had to come to a decision. Alright? Who do you think won the case? The Serbian. Hmm. Serbian, why? No, this is not obstructing. Exactly, right? So the court said no. He is not not like we can see that we don't build a gantry or something. But this he just built this thing, ugly thing, right? So the court said these two things are ugly, no doubt it's very ugly, right? We need to do how we cannot stop, right? So because of the lawsuit. So he said, although these two things are very ugly, but he's building on his own land. But the key thing is that he never obstruct your way. You have a free your 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 you know your, your exercise of your easement, your rights of way, it's not impeded, not obstructed. Okay, so you have free movement. So 
no case. Right? So the court threw out the dominant uh, owner's case, right? And the survey owner this case, uh, this particular proceedings won, won the day. Okay? So that is the difference between the two cases here. Ah, I really hate doing this. Okay. Annotation. <laughs> okay, can I pick the picture? I think uh, let's go for a break. My my clock here is uh, forty two. All right, eight forty two. Shall we come back at uh, just about fifty eight fifty? About eight minutes break. All right, come back at eight fifty and we continue.